to the slideshow and now go through um, some tips and tricks and, to way, and some ways to, um, to make sure that things are working correctly. Um, we get lots of emails um, all throughout the year about why web maps don't work, about why certain people um, who are on the flyer don't have access while other people do. Um, while some people, why some people can edit, why some people can't edit, um, all sorts of questions. So um, I'll run through some of those. And then when you create uh, web maps from the incident web map a template, um, you are more than welcome to create these for, um, for, in for initial attack or for large fires. Um, they're certainly available for fires of all sizes and scales. But whenever you do that and you add any ancillary data or services to your web map um, for editing purposes or for viewing purposes, make sure that they have sync enabled. And this setting is in the is accessible from the feature service item details from the settings tab. Even if it's not editing, um, it doesn't have editing enabled, be sure that sync is enabled. Another big one is to make sure that all services are shared into your mobile editing group. Um, otherwise, people will not have access to it in Collector. Um, we've seen where there are um, multiple maps that are shared into multiple groups, um, services are shared into different groups and things like that. So I think trying to organize your feature services, your web maps, and your users is key to make sure that everyone has access to the maps and to the features that they need access to. Ensure that the web map is offline enabled. If you happen to add a service that is not sync enabled, sometimes this toggle will switch back to the left. It will disable offline mode. Um, sometimes you, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I, I'm not quite sure why, uh, why it responds when it does, but it is definitely um, important to check this offline feature in the, again, it's in the item details for the web map and make sure that your web map is offline enabled. One thing that a lot of people noticed at the end of last season was that web maps that have map areas created in AGOL in the settings um, are not able to change owners. So during times of transition from one team to another, map, uh, web maps with map areas enabled will not be, cannot be changed with their ownership. Um, that is, um, that's an Esri issue and they are aware of it. Um, and I don't think that has changed this year. So please be aware of that. And map areas, they don't necessarily need to be created in AGOL. The user will create their own offline map areas on the fly when they download their map. Again, in web map settings, if you scroll to the bottom with, um, with field maps now, you will have this, these new features where it says use an ArcGIS collector and then use an ArcGIS field maps mobile. If, you'll, if you create a web map that has, no, that has no features that are editable, oftentimes it will uncheck the box for use an ArcGIS collector. There are different functionalities for collector and for field maps. And field maps will allow you to access uh, web maps that do not have um, editing enabled for all of the services. So just be aware that both of them, that both of these boxes are checked. Um, again, please no sensitive data. I know resource advisors really like to have uh, arc sites and things like that, but um, we are not advising that anyone stores any sort of sensitive data in the NIFC org. As a GISS, I'm sure you've probably noticed that you've, um, you can see pretty much all the content that is in the NIFC org um, and you don't want people snooping. I know that there are certainly no malicious intentions, um, but it happens when people find things that aren't meant to be found. So please try not to keep sensitive data in the NIFC org. And uh, Katie, I'm gonna add that if we do see sensitive data, uh, we'll remove it immediately, just to kind of give everybody a heads up. So if the layer disappears, um, it could be because it has sensitive data. Right, thank you. Yes, that's very important, no sensitive data. Um, and to tag on to that, um, one more thing is that I know a lot of you have seen the emails um, to remove old data. We are not a data storage location. Um, we're, not a, we're not a storage locker. Um, please remove data that's more than two years old and certainly remove large files like TPKs and vector TPKs that are no longer for fires or for fires from last season. There's really no reason to keep that information in that 
um, type of thing stored in the NIFSI org. It, um, it bogs down the NIFSI org and um, also it takes up a lot of space and clutter. So yeah, we'd appreciate for you to clean up your content um, for us and for others um, to keep up the performance in the NIFSI org. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to email us at wildfireresponse at firenet.gov. Um, fill out a support request form and that form is available on the homepage. And please, as I mentioned before, if you are on an active incident and you have any issues that you need to be, that need to be addressed um, close to immediate, please use the support request form. We have a button that's, a, or the question that asks you if you're on an active incident. And if that's the case, then it gets forwarded on to us and, um, and it gets flagged. So we know that people need attention uh, pretty quick. So just wanted to put a plug for that. Um, so that's all I have. I know I ran through that really fast. I apologize. I talk fast when um, I do these, try not to. <laughs> um, so if anyone has anything to add, please let me know.